Counterpoint can be defined as the effective use of multiple simultaneous yet independent melodies. But it involves much more than that, because a person might conclude based on that definition that melody is the only important element, or at least the most important element that's associated with counterpoint. And this is not the case, as we'll see in a moment. In mathematics, to effectively locate a point in two -dimensional, on a two-dimensional plane, more is needed than just the x-coordinate or the, the horizontal axis. We also need the y-coordinate, and once we have both, then we can describe the location of our point. Now in music, a point or a note belongs to both the melody line, which is like the x or the horizontal axis, but also the harmony, which is the y or the, the vertical. So we'll look at an example here. This is an excerpt from a C-sharp minor fugue by J.S. Bach. And if we look here at this note right here, the F-sharp, if we examine the surrounding notes running vertical or horizontally, it's obvious that it belongs to E major. It's basically an E major scale uh, that's arranged differently. So melodically, temporarily, the, the melody is E major. Now the tonic of the overall piece is C-sharp minor. So it would be the mediant or the, the three. But harmonically, if we look at it vertically, it has an F-sharp, uh, a D-sharp, and a B. So it's a B major uh, chord, which is the dominant of E, or the five of three, since E major is the three of the tonic, and B major is the five of E. Uh, so we see that both elements are needed in counterpoint. But more is needed than just those two elements because we need an element that's temporal, something that describes the time in which it exists. Now that might seem kind of abstract to a musician, but if we think of math again, uh, in more advanced math, when time or at least three-dimensional mapping is involved, we add a z-axis. Now in music, analogous to that z-axis is rhythm, because rhythm is temporal, it has to do with timing. So we'll look at another example about why this is the case. Right here, uh, examining the B-sharp, using the same technique as before, looking vertically, it's difficult because it's only surrounded by a G-sharp and another G-sharp. Well, B-sharp and G-sharp uh, is only either a major third or a minor sixth, so that's just an interval, not a harmony. Uh, but keeping in mind the, the temporal aspect of rhythm, this has a longer time value, so it extends past uh, this note. And so we can move over here. This still applies to the B-sharp. So now we have G-sharp, uh, D-sharp, and B-sharp. So now we have a G major chord, which is the dominant of one, which is uh, C-sharp minor, the overall tonality of the piece. Uh, so we can see how all three elements are, are needed for uh, effective counterpoint. So while counterpoint is a separate element, we could kind of think of it as the effective use of all three smaller elements. So next we'll consider um, the principles and laws of counterpoint. Now this isn't going to be a strict examination of strict counterpoint, which is the uh, traditional study of the Cantus firmus and its associated species. This is simply a look at modern-day counterpoint and practical applications.